Pretty impressive, right? Uh, I know what you're asking here and what you're thinking and the answer to that is yes. Of course I was the most popular kid in school, but the question that you should be asking is whether or not you have your own personal database. And I'm not talking about Google Drive here, I'm talking about your own personal hyper-customized database that you have full control over. If not, then let me show you why I think you should. So the most compelling reason for why you'd want to build your own database is basically because it's just a really great skill to have. And once you have a database, there's just so many things that you can do with it on top of just having the skill of being able to build one. You can create your own API for the database. You can run a local web server to host your database and API on. And once you've done all this, why not build your own app for your database so that you can access it super easily via your phone remotely. So just creating a database on its own can be a really good thing to add to your portfolio and it will really add some credibility to your resume as well, which will help you get more jobs. And if you're able to do all the things I described previously, then you'll basically be able to do like full stack development. And even if you won't be an expert at it, you'll still have enough knowledge to be able to put together your own MVPs or minimum viable products, which is what that stands for for your own startups, which is such an incredible, empower, incredibly empowering thing to be able to do. And you get all of these benefits from just a simple act of actually trying to build your database. And I still haven't gotten to the part of the incredible usefulness of the actual database itself. All of those previous benefits are just from the act of trying to build it. This video was inspired by a blog post that was written by Derek Sivers. And if you don't know who he is, then I highly recommend reading this blog post about why you need a database. And also listening to the Tim Ferriss Show episode where Derek was on, which, side note, is one of my most listened to podcast episodes ever. I never thought of the idea of having and building my own database until I read his blog post. I didn't see the need for it, but after reading his blog post, first off, I got really excited to code and to just build my own custom database, which you can actually see me do live on my other channel called Live Coder. So if you wanna see me build this thing live, then you can go over there and watch me do it. And the second thing that started happening as I was reading his blog post was that I started realizing that there are actually some really nice use cases for having your own database. You can think of it almost like a Google Drive on steroids because what you can do with the database is that you can create relationships between different things and it can get like infinitely complex. So one use case could be to store information about people you email with. You can store their email address and connect that to their name, home address, age, birthday, and maybe you also want to be able to add or make a few notes about that person so that you can easily remember who it is and what they do or what they're about. Maybe you also want to add some sort of tagging system so that you can find people quickly. Imagine that every time you make a new friend or someone emails you, you make a new entry into your database with their name, a few notes about what you know about this person, and maybe a tag that says what this person works as. This means that in the future, if you're looking for a person who does what that person did, you can simply search through your database for that tag and you'll find them and some information about them that you might find useful or have forgotten. Because how often have you said the sentence of like, I've probably asked this question before, but what were you studying again? Or what did you do for work again? Uh, that sort of question is something that's very common, I think. And I know that I've done that a lot. And it's sort of embarrassing because you know that you've probably asked that question before and they probably know that they've answered that question before, but you still have to ask it because you don't remember. With your own personal database, you can basically create your own system where you write down some basic information about the people that you meet. And then you can have something where before you meet up with someone, you just read through that a little bit and you can see that, okay, this person studies this or this person does this for a living. And then once you meet up with them, you can actually ask some more specific questions related to the topic that they're actually studying or whatever they're doing for work. You could also create a system for setting your own reminders. Maybe you want to send an email to a certain person or call a certain person in three weeks. You can create a little feature that lets you set a reminder for that or for people's birthdays. 
maybe even an automated happy birthday message. These are just some of the things that you can do within your database in regards to people, but you can also store things like photos, notes, and lots of other things. So the thing is that a lot of these things can definitely be accomplished with Google Drive or similar services like that. And they're probably or most definitely easier with the Google Drive or other services, other options. But the idea is not for it to be super easy. The idea is that it should be more like a passion project where you get excited about the thought of like creating the most like hyper useful, super customized version of a database for yourself that is perfect or a perfect fit for your specific needs. So in that way, you can think of Google Drive as like the H&M of a suit, the H&M version of a suit. There's nothing wrong with buying a suit from H&M. It's just that it's not gonna be tailored to one specific individual. It's basically gonna be made so that it fits most people pretty well, but it won't fit any specific person perfectly or most people won't fit that specific suit perfectly compared to like a tailored suit that will fit just one individual absolutely perfectly. So that's kind of the idea about this. It's a passion project more than anything. So how do you do it? First off, I would start by creating constraints. What do you want to actually store in your database? You can always add more things in later. So I suggest starting small if you've never built a database before. Maybe just with email addresses and names of the owners of those addresses, for instance, that's a great start. And then figure out what type of database system you wanna use. I personally use PostgreSQL, not because it's the best, but because it's the one that I've used before, so it's the one that I know the best. If this is your first database, then I recommend spending just a little bit of time researching the most commonly used language for databases, which is SQL. And just commit to spending like an hour or two hours researching and learning a little bit about that language just to understand a little bit about the basics of how it works. And I would say that SQL is easier than most programming languages because it's not actually a programming language per se. And I also say that you wouldn't really need to know it by heart because for me at least, I Google most of the commands anyway, but I just understand some of the basic fundamentals of how it works. So you don't really need to know it by heart and today's video sponsor Skillshare will actually be super helpful here. Skillshare has tons of classes that teach SQL and creating and working with databases, along with over 25,000 different classes on pretty much any other topic that you can come up with. So it's a really good resource for learning that I use a lot and was actually paying for before Skillshare ever contacted me to do a collaboration. So I genuinely love what they do and it's really affordable at only $10 a month for an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 of you guys that click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So for me, it's a no-brainer and it's a great resource for learning new things and diving into new topics of interest. I've watched tons of different classes and I've enjoyed lots of different ones, all the way from Ali Abdal's courses on productivity to the MKBHD courses on how he creates his videos. I really enjoy it and you can literally pick from thousands of classes on everything from programming to productivity to oil painting. It's a great place to start learning about new interests and even to just consume more content for some of your favorite creators. And again, the first 1000 of you guys that use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So sign up for it, it'll be free, so why not? After you've spent just a couple hours learning, you're ready to get started, figure out how to create a database, how to add new things into the database or the table. And once you've learned how to create some basic tables and how to add some data into those tables, then I suggest looking into some Python libraries for creating SQL databases within your Python code. This makes things work a little bit smoother for me at least. After you've done this, you're done and you have your own database. And maybe I make this sound a little bit easier than it actually is, like it'll take just five minutes to do. It probably won't take you five minutes, especially if it's your first time building a database. And I would say that even if you're pretty experienced, it won't take you five minutes to build a database of your own. But this is a bigger project and you shouldn't be scared of it. You shouldn't be afraid that of like attempting it and actually failing because even attempting it and failing will give you so many valuable things. You'll learn so many valuable things in the process of actually trying. So really don't be scared to try and fail because the actual act of trying it will be super valuable for you. I guarantee you it will. And if you've succeeded, then congratulations, you have your own database. And now you might wanna be considering like creating a simple Python script that will actually 
give you like a command line text interface to interact with that database. Not necessary, but you could do it. Now, if you want to take this a step further, I would suggest looking into how to create an API for your newly born database. An API is basically just an interface between an app and a database. The API is what allows communication to happen between your app and a database somewhere. It's almost like a translator. We send our code to the API that translates this code to SQL, which is what our database understands. I've left links in the description to resources on each topic that I use as my cheat sheet when it comes to working on these things. After you've created your API, you're now ready to create an application for that API and for your database. And if we think of something like Facebook, for instance, Facebook is essentially just a database under the hood where it has a lot of information, like information about your friends, your photos that you're tagged in, your relationship status, regular statuses, lots of things. And essentially that's how most social media apps works actually, like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and um, actually how a lot of apps work. WhatsApp is also an example that is a database under the hood. And essentially the Facebook web application and the mobile application is basically just there to take whatever is in the database and display that to the user in a way where the user can actually interact with it a little bit easier compared to having to actually type in SQL commands to find your friends and photos of your family. I personally suggest using Flutter to build yourself a mobile app that you can use to talk to your database. Potentially you can just make an app with a search bar where you can type in an email address and then the app will send a request to your API, which will then translate that request into a database query that will fetch you whatever information you're looking for. Again, Skillshare is a great resource here with lots of classes on Flutter app development where you can get started. What I really like about this is that no matter how far you want to take it, you'll have a really cool project to work on and that will undoubtedly give you some really good things to put on your resume that will hopefully help you get an actual job. And this is what I used to do. I used to try to find projects that I was excited to actually work on and that I thought would give me the opportunity to showcase skills or to learn new skills that would look really good on my resume. And that's also how I got my first job. So I really recommend thinking like this when selecting the projects that you wanna work on. But of course, like most importantly, find things that you actually want to be doing and that you're actually excited to be working on. Because most employers are actually looking for programmers that are just passionate about programming. That's something that's super important to an employer. And if they can see that you're actually working on projects and taking on these like ambitious tasks or just doing it in your free time, that'll be huge bonus points to put on your resume. So I highly recommend doing that. And I think that it can't really be overstated how much or how important that actually is. Anyway, that's it for this one. And I hope you enjoyed it and that you got some really useful tips out of this. And again, if you wanna see me actually build out my own database live, then you can head over to my live coder channel and you'll see what it looks like when I actually build things out myself. And I think that a lot of you guys will be surprised. So I definitely recommend going over and checking that out. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.